Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near, between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Summary The speaker thinks about who owns the woods that he or she is passing through and is fairly sure of knowing the landowner. However, the owner's home is far away in the village and thus he is physically incapable of seeing the speaker pause to watch the snow fall in the forest. The speaker thinks his or her horse must find it strange to stop so far from any signs of civilization. Indeed, they are surrounded only by the forest and a frozen lake. On the longest night of the year, the horse shakes the bells on its harness as if asking if the speaker has made a mistake by stopping. The only other sound besides the ringing of these bells is that of the wind and falling snowflakes which the speaker likens to the feathers of goose down. The speaker finds the woods very alluring, drawn both to their darkness and how vast and all-encompassing they seem. However, the speaker has obligations to fulfill elsewhere. Thus, though he or she would like to stay and rest, the speaker notes there are many more miles to go before that will be possible. Whose woods these are, I think I know. The speaker is wondering who the owner of the woods might be as he wanders through that forest. His house is in the village though. However, the speaker is aware that the owner of the woods lives in the close-by community and is therefore likely to have already visited that area and that he most likely knows the owner too. He will not see me stopping here. The speaker pauses briefly in the woods but is sure that the owner of the woods won't be keeping an eye on him. To watch his woods fill up with snow, the speaker is enjoying the tranquility of the moment as well as the beauty of the snow falling on the trees and surrounding scenery. In the second verse, the speaker imagines how his horse must be experiencing as they come to a stop on the darkest night of the year in the middle of emptiness and isolation particularly between some trees and a frozen lake. It's rare for the horse to stay in such a remote location because it most frequently stops close to a farmhouse or other shelter. The speaker and his horse are the only living things in the vast snow-covered wilderness which is conveyed by the depiction in this stanza. My little horse must think it queer which is the second verse's first line indicates that the speaker is aware of his animal's discomfort with stopping in the middle of the woods. This line demonstrates the link between the speaker and his horse as well as the speaker's concern for his animal's feelings. The speaker's seclusion in the woods is underlined in the sentence that follows to stop without a farmhouse near which also emphasizes the absence of any other people in the area and puts an emphasis on the unlikeliness of any other person stopping by at such an isolated place and that too at such an odd hour of the day. The following line between the woods and frozen lake gives the reader a clearer picture of the surroundings of the poet and the horse and makes a better picture of the landscape in the reader's mind. It also tries to show that the place where they are resting is completely isolated far away from the matting crowd. The last line of the stanza, the darkest evening of the year, clearly gives the impression that the poet has decided to look at this beautiful landscape after a long and tiring journey and wants a moment's rest to appreciate nature. Some readers also contemplate this line as an emphasis on the extremely cold and harsh weather the poet is traveling in. In the third stanza, the speaker's horse shakes the bells on its harness as if to inquire whether stopping in the middle of the woods on such a gloomy, snowy evening was a mistake. The 
sweep of the easy wind and down a flake, a soft rustling of the snow and wind is the only other sound in the scene that emphasizes the fact that the poet and his horse are quite alone there in the middle of a cold forest. This stanza emphasizes the speaker's bond with his horse and the horse's sensitivity to the beats and expectations of their voyage. This also reflects the poet's humbleness in listening to his horse's instincts and ability to communicate smoothly with the horse. He gives his harness bells a shake. In this line, the speaker describes that the horse shakes his harness bells to awaken its owner from his hypnotic state of staring at the snow-covered woods because it was quite unusual for the horse and the poet to stop in the middle of nowhere and that too on a very chilled night to inquire whether there is a mistake. The speaker wonders if stopping in this isolated location at this time of the day is the right choice because his horse's behavior and response to it were quite the opposite. The only other sounds the sweep in the third line, the poet is trying to convey the absolute stillness and quietness of their surrounding which gives an airy vibe. The level of quietness is apparent because the only sound they can hear is of the wind sweeping through the snow of easy wind and downy flake. In the last line, the speaker talks more about the winds and the flakes around them and describes the winds sound as easy, which denotes a mild or gentle vibe and the snowflakes as downy, which denotes gentle and fluffy vibes. In the fourth stanza, the speaker continues to describe the peacefulness and beauty of the woods. He acknowledges that the woods are lovely, dark and deep, but recognizes that he cannot stay there because he has promises to keep. These promises could be responsibilities or obligations that he must fulfill. He repeats the final line and miles to go before I sleep, which emphasizes his recognition that he still has a long journey ahead of him before he can rest. The fourth stanza serves as a turning point in the poem where the speaker's thoughts shift from the calmness of the woods to the reality of his responsibilities. The repetition of miles to go before I sleep creates a sense of urgency and reminds the reader that the speaker cannot linger in the woods for too long.